coming up on this episode of the Spiro Podcast. Right. I never try to blame anything for anyone. I always try to blame the process. So whenever there's a gap in our business, I don't blame a person. I blame the process. Welcome to the Spiro Podcast, managing your real estate photography and videography business. With your hosts, Todd Kivimaki and Craig Magler. Hi, and welcome to the Spiro Podcast, managing your real estate photography and videography business. Spiro is a software platform designed to help you manage and grow your day-to-day business in real estate visual media. I'm your host, Craig Magrum. Welcome to the podcast. We're always glad to have you. Glad to be back. I uh, was on vacation for, well, for a couple of days anyway, uh, last week, and maybe we'll dive into that. But along with me each and most every week, uh, co-host and also Spiro founder and owner, Todd Kivimaki. Good to be back, Todd. Craig, welcome back. It's great to have you back. Thank you. Yeah. You, you know, I, I warned all the, the listeners last week, uh-huh. and especially first-time listeners, I said, if, if this is your first time tuning in, I'm sorry. You are missing the better half of the podcast. Oh, so for crying out loud. Hopefully they came back and they <laughs> will get you this week. You're the one that provides all the great content. Well, I mean, I, I chip in here and there, but no, it's a team effort. It's a team. It's a team. Yeah. But it's great to have you back. You know, I listen to these things every once in a while just to make sure that (laughs) we're not totally blowing it. (laughs) Yeah. I I literally, yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness, Todd, why'd you say that? Or why are you talking so fast? So I listened to the one with just me last week and it was so weird. The open, I'm like, like, I was almost like, like I knew it was me in the opening, but I was almost like jarred because I didn't hear your voice. So (laughs) it's good to have you back. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was an enjoyable couple of days off. I've, yeah, so we could nerd out, and I could I could share what I did, but I don't know if listeners want to hear it. But well, part Craig, of me wants well, to nerd out, you know. Well, Craig, where were you? <laughs> For those of you that have not heard this time last year, I I make this uh, yearly pilgrimage down to the Dayton, Ohio area. It's now in Xenia, Ohio, but it was in mm-hmm. Dayton for years. But it's called Hamvention. Mm. Invention, yeah, and it's not about uh, not Is about the smoking. Meat. Oh <laughs> no, no, okay. no, actually, it's not, not smoking meat. No, I'm I'm a ham radio operator. Maybe some maybe some people have heard of that. They're like, that's still around. That's still a thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yearly. This is the largest gathering of ham radio operators in the world, Todd. Happens every year down, the, like I said, down the Dayton area. And it's on average around 30,000 people that show up for this from Whoa. all over the yeah, all over the world. Wow. All over the world. Yeah, it's it's fun. We, we get our nerd on. We get our geek on. And uh, we have a good time looking at all the, you know, all the gear and forums and meeting up with people that you've talked to on the air or communicated with on the air you know it's 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 a lot of fun but. this was like the original social media exactly like you were a pioneer of social media craig like there you go all of our listeners out there are like what are you talking about like so give us <laughs> give us the 20 or 30 sec what is ham radio okay so it's i mean it's a hobby of sorts but um, there's, it, it's just worldwide radio communication. It's, it's not broadcasting. So it's not like a, a traditional commercial radio station. It's point to point communication. So, you know, me as a ham radio operator with my gear, my radio setup, my antenna out in my yard, which is just a, a, a 12 gauge electrical wire run up a pole with a coax running out to it. My transmitter, my, my, my transceiver here in the, in the, in the office, um, hooked up to the computer. You could do voice modes. You could still use Morse code, believe it or not. A lot of, mm. a lot of Morse code operators or digital communication. So it's basically, I can text without cell phones or the internet. It's kind of cool. That is cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So unless our listeners are of our age or older, or they are preppers, they <laughs> just learned about ham radio for the first time. <laughs> so <Our> preppers. <laughs> Right. There is, I mean, there, there is that segment of hams. Yeah. We, we took, well, no, I won't get into that. I don't want to insult anybody. It's, it's just for, it's, it's a fun hobby for me. I, I'm just, I'm fascinated how a, an electromagnetic wave can encode data in information or voice or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and it could go halfway across the world and be decoded on the other side. It's just, it's awesome. I, I've reached people in Australia and Japan. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> 
That's cool. You know, we take communication for granted. Yeah, how we do. easy it is to communicate. And we're like, well, what you can just hop online and and do yeah. that. Right. But no, like prior to online, you could not. I remember I I I haven't done ham radio, Craig, but I do remember the days back in. Uh, you know, the early infancies of modem. So, you know, your <laughs> yeah. 16, six or 32 K modem, you'd plug it in and you dial up. And mm -hmm. I remember there was an app or there was a program or a website that you'd go to and you could ping someone across the world and you would randomly get someone. And I do remember <laughs> the excitement of like it ringing and somebody picking yep. up and a voice from, I don't know where, but had an accent that I didn't really understand, like answered. And I'm just like, <laughs> Who like whoa? This is so neat. So yeah, yeah. It's well, I'm fun. glad okay. you got away. Yeah, I would say we're, we're boring people by now. Let's let's move on. <laughs> I find it interesting. I think it's fun, but anyway. <laughs> it's good to be back. So, all right. Well, uh, last week you uh, dove into a very exciting topic of bookkeeping, and yes. that's an important thing. That's that important done. Thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> insurance. We still need to cover insurance, Todd. Insurance. Yeah, we did one way back, but we need yeah. to hit that again. Those are yeah. things like, remember, y'all, you are the owner of your business. Last mm -hmm. week for finances, you're the CFO of your business. Right. You're the HR of your business. You're the CEO of your business. You need to protect it, too. Yeah. Part of that is finances. Right. Right. Well, before we get into this week's topic, um, I love seeing the, the you know, emails come in from listeners and viewers, seeing the YouTube comments. And uh, you you had a couple of comments that came in that you wanted to share, right? I did. Yeah. Just a few testimonials here that I'd like yeah. to share from some of our users. Um, there are, so I'm going to, here's Luis. I will read. He says, Spiro is truly the best software out there and offers tons of features, resources, and materials, which allow me to have everything I needed in one place at a crucial time in my business. Mm, that's awesome. Spiro has saved me hours of time and has allowed my business to grow quickly. I look forward to all the future updates and features. I am confident that Spiro will be the leading software for the real estate photography industry and other industries as well. So thank you, Luis, for that. Appreciate that. Elena said, one of my clients that usually has something negative to say about everything actually com complimented <laughs> the marketing kits when I delivered the media. All right. So I wanted to pass this along. <laughs> he liked the media kits, had nothing negative to say. Kind of a miracle. <laughs> thank you, Elena. That's funny. <laughs> I know people like that, though. I get that. <laughs> yes. I Yeah. Herb said, uh, dang, son, you guys are smashing it out of the park. Thanks, Herb. Um, <laughs> Joshua said, coming from a real estate team hyper-focused on systems and processes, Spiro is an absolute mm. breath of fresh air. I truly appreciate all of your hard work for the continuous sharing of knowledge and experience. It's made the transition into opening my own business so much smoother and actionable. Uh, for those of you that don't know Joshua, he went from a realtor to a real estate photographer. Yeah, that's uh, what you're. That's what you're all about, Todd. Systems and processes. Systems and processes. You know, if if you're going to do it a thousand times a year, or twelve thousand times, or a hundred thousand times a year, let's just create a system for it, streamline it, and mm -hmm. that's what we've spent twenty years doing inside of Spiro. Right. Right. So. Well, cool. Awesome feedback. Yeah, thank you all for sending that in and reaching out. We love to hear that. We don't mind hearing the bad either. Yeah. Chat with us. You know, if you got if you have a question, if you have feedback, please let us know. That makes us better. Uh, we love hearing. You know, we're still humans. <laughs> we we love hearing the great as well. I shared this link last week. If you do have feedback, we do have a board now online where you can post a suggestion for a future update. Oh, the other cool, cool thing is, yeah, if someone else posted this suggestion that you want, or you can read other suggestions, you can upvote it as well. So we will work on the suggestions with the highest number of votes or those of you that want the most of you, what you want. Wait a minute. Let me try that again. <laughs> we will work Speaking on. about communication. <laughs> Holy cow. Jeez. Oh, beats Todd. <laughs> we will work on the highest priority that you as a community want all Spiro users. So I'll give you a website here. We'll put it in the notes as well, but it's spiromedia.featurebase.app. So we'll link it below, but you can go in there. You can also see the roadmap of what's coming and also the change log of what we have done in the past. That'll work. That'll work. What, what's that website one more time? Just so people get it. That is spiromedia.featurebase.app. Got it. All right. 
like I said, we'll put that here on the screen and we'll make sure that's in the show notes for you as well. Yeah. All righty. Well, anything else we want to hit before we dive into this week's topic? One more quick thing. This is a yeah. side. I see this question a lot and they ask about, I see an editor question a lot. A lot of you are, I understand it's, can we get consistent editors? How do mm. we uh, get the quality we want? And, you know, when you do a test typically with a, with an editing team or an editor, the test that's sent back looks beautiful, right? And then maybe <laughs> a month later, six months later, maybe one week later, it looks completely different. So mm. there's, you know, those are the struggles of having an editing team and the turnaround time and the process. Uh, I would like to mention, though, that we do have an editing team. So we have created what so at wow, we created our own editing team it's called Creo. It's in Kosovo. The, uh, I am just a minority owner in it. Lobden and Shend over in, in Kosovo are the majority owners of it. And we send a ton of jobs to them for our company. Wow. Video tours. Now they have expanded and they are able to service other real estate companies as well. So if you are looking for an editor, uh, they can do your editing and they will integrate completely into Spiro. They know the system really well. So if you want to streamline your editing process, we're going to talk about some of that today, not editing, mm -hmm. but we're going to talk about streamlining your process. You can reach out to Lobden. You can find him at Creo, C-R-E-O, L-L-C dot net. So Creo, C-R-E-O, L-L-C dot net. Feel free to reach out to them. You'll have a real call. He'll get you on Skype or Zoom. He's a fantastic individual. Like I said, he I'm a minority owner, so I'm a partner with him and Shen. But uh, it's a great option for you. No pressure to try it, but I know we have other Spiro users and other non-Spiro users using them as well, and mm -hmm. they have expanded their capacity. Very cool. Good job. We'll, uh, again, on the screen, and I'll put that in the show notes for you as well if you're interested in checking that out. Cool. Right. cool. All right. Well, talking about processes. Yes. And uh, how important that is to your business, having a streamlined process, something that's repeatable, uh, the motion that you go through every day to keep things consistent and predictable. And I mean, there's always going to be wrenches that get thrown into your process, right? Mm -hmm. That's just life. Yeah. Um, that unexpected phone call from a realtor that just upends the whole day or say a camera going down in the middle of your day mm -hmm. and you didn't have a backup. With you. There's always things. But if you can have... Um, uh, a streamlined process for most functions in your business, you're going to find that it makes things efficient, profitable, and repeatable. So mm -hmm. let's dive into that this week, Todd. What what specifically did you want to dive into on processes? Yeah. So I want to keep the same kind of day in the life. Uh, you know, we understand what you are doing every day because we, we have done it or we are still doing it. So mm -hmm. Craig, we talk about this a lot. So Craig, is an employee of Wow Video Tours, and he not only does business development in his market, but he also does the does the photo and video when uh, when needed, and 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 a lot of it. And as he grows the market, you know, our goal is to transition and to get you know him into shooting less and building more relationships. But regardless, he is out shooting every day. So I want to stick to the day in the life. We've gotten really good feedback on that. And and hopefully you can get some little nuggets in here of how to streamline. But one important thing is, is once you get the jobs in and there's lots of jobs coming in, you need to fulfill the jobs. Mm -hmm. And like Craig mentioned, having this streamlined, repeatable process will ensure consistency, quality, will ensure that expectations are set and met. Expectations are so important in mm -hmm. any process at any business. And we've developed a streamlined process. So I want to start from the fact of we've got a packed schedule and we've got a lot of things coming in. And Craig, I want to start this process with the night before. So sure. you have shoots tomorrow and I want you all out there that are listening right now to kind of think about what your process is and are there gaps anywhere? Is there anywhere that you can improve the process? And if so, take a couple things, make some changes and make that process better. So in talking about communication and expectations, 
there's a couple things that have to happen for the day to go off okay tomorrow. Mm-hmm. One of those things is uh, it's one of your two largest pain points as a photographer. So it's not the driving you do. What's the number two pain point you have as a photographer, Craig, when you're out shooting houses? Uh, well, Todd, I, I would have to say by far home readiness, the client mm. or the seller not being ready, you know, for the professional shoot that's been scheduled for them. You walk yeah. in, the house is not quite ready. And then you got to wait for them to try and move things and hide things or clean or and you just you don't have time for that in your shoot day. I might have four, five, six shoots, you know, stacked up in a day. And I, I can't wait for that seller to be cleaning and moving. So, yeah, I, that's what I would say is is home readiness. Awesome. So that's the same of what we hear, Craig. And that's yeah. I think the general consensus out there is there's nothing worse than to drive all of those miles and spend that time to get to a property to just want to do your job. And you can't do your job. Right. And even if you try to do your job, you are set up for almost failure because you're so focused on getting the house ready or waiting for the homeowner to move things. And am I going to be late to my next appointment? Do I need to alert somebody that you probably just end up forgetting to shoot something? You know, oh, I forgot the master bathroom. Like, well, how do you forget? Well, you forget that because you were taking around this rat race of trying to clean things up, herd seven cats and sweep the floors at the same time. Can you start upstairs or start in the basement and that your order gets thrown? Yeah. 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 So the ways that we combat that as a software and, and as a real estate media business is we send text messages. I mean, we, we just talked about communication, right? With the ham. Now we will, we, there's no ham radio involved. We do not send point to point signals to the homeowners. We've updated it, it a little fun. bit. <laughs> yeah. Great. Could you imagine you get a list of like a thousand, like point to points you need to do for tomorrow of all the subscribers? Hey, be listening on uh, 146.5, <laughs> two megahertz at this time. I'm going to send you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh. Uh, so, so we've upgraded that process and any, <laughs> any subscriber on the order will receive a text message. So you're used to this, right? Domino's does this. They're kind of the ones that premiere. They have the pizza tracker. But my chiropractor does this. My doctor does this. When I have an appointment, I had an appointment with my accountant the other day. I had a text message reminder because time is money. Hmm. So the system will automatically send those reminders out the day before. And you know what we put in those reminders? A getting ready guide. Oh, my goodness. Can you even believe it? It's like, but wait, there's more. Right. And you know what happens when the homeowner gets the getting ready guide? (laughs) They mumble under their breath at the photographer and all the work that they have to do. (laughs) Yeah, but they do it. (laughs) Most of the time. Most of the time. Most Most of the time, time. yeah. Yeah. It's not a perfect process, but think, put yourself in their shoes. And you've probably sold a house before. Those of you that have, you're selling the largest investment of your Mm -hmm. life. If you get a list that says you should do these things and make your house look great. Do it. Do it. Yeah. So, and we actually have examples of when Ryan, our head trainer was out, he was in Charlotte and he had a couple of, I don't think the appointments were back to back, but they're in the same day. Walks into the first appointment. House is nowhere near ready. Nowhere near ready. And the homeowner said, you know, it'd be really great. If you guys gave me like an idea, a list of items I should do before you guys get here. So I know what you want me to do. You know, Ryan turns and beats his head on the wall. (laughs) Not literally, but this light bulb goes off. He's like, oh, well, yeah, we, well, we, I mean, what is you supposed to say? Oh, we gave it to your, we gave it to your realtor. Your realtor is a real, you know what? Drop the ball. (laughs) No, you can't say that. And then he goes to a house the same day, and I'm not even kidding you, and he walks in and it's great, perfect. Mm. And you know what information he got back from the homeowner? I said, hey, that sheet you sent me, that sheet I got from my realtor was really helpful, and the house was perfect. Mm. So at that point, we were like, hey, like we know how busy realtors are. It's not a fault of the realtor. I I never try to blame anything for anyone. I always try to blame the process. So whenever there's a gap in our business, I don't blame a person. I blame the process. 
So the process of giving our getting ready sheet to the realtor was flawed because realtors are busy. If we want the homeowner to have the getting ready sheet, let's send it directly to the homeowner. Boom, update was done in Spiro, add a homeowner to an order. We will text message them reminders and your getting ready guide. Todd, I really, I wanna repeat that because that just yeah. jumped out to me. Don't blame the person, blame the process. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, you wanna destroy a business relationship, point a finger at a person. You want to improve the relationship and make your business better? Look at the process to avert the issue that you just faced. I, I like that. That was good. You know, I can't take credit for that. One of my coaches, I believe Dennis, Dennis told me that. Hmm. I, had a, I, I had this whole, it was, I was in a coaching call with him and I was just convinced that I was right. You know, I was <laughs> proud, had my chest out, that I was right. And, and he set me completely straight hmm. that the process was flawed Hmm. that this employee, they were just following what they knew. They had never given any sign that they would do something behind my back or do something incorrectly or not want to have the best intentions for the company. And he was 100% right. And I have lived, hmm. by, tried to live by that ever since of just don't blame people, blame the process. I like that. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. I just, I wanted to point that out. Yeah, no, I, that's a I thank you for that. So that process is done for you. Put your homeowners on the order and you say, well, Todd, how do I get my agents to know that they can add a homeowner? You just tell them. We talked mm -hmm. about newsletters. We talked about communication. It's not going to be a 100%. You're not going to tell them once and they're not going to remember. You're going to have to actively work at communicating. It's not hard, mm -hmm. but you're not going to do it one time and expect it all to be done. Right. So always communicate. And this is a selling point for your company. Hey, realtors, we've made it so easy for you. We know how busy you are. We know you're managing a thousand things a day. We want to help you make sure houses look beautiful for our photo and video services. We now allow you to add your homeowners onto the order. Here's how you do it on step three. Click add a homeowner, enter in the homeowner's name and cell phone number, click save. Now we will automatically send text message reminders to your homeowners. You know, just do something like that. You can type it. You can tell them that you can create a video and send it all to them. You get creative. You're more creative than I. That's the messaging I would give them mm -hmm. to sell that you have upgraded your services. You've upgraded your systems and you're making their life easier. They love that. They, yeah. And you see it firsthand, right, Craig? I mean, you're still mm -hmm. out there every day and you see this in action. Yeah. Yeah. When I do a presentation in an office and I show that feature or show the marketing toolkit and how that's integrated into their system, their eyes just light up. So the night before your all subscribers, this could be the agent as well, because sometimes agent need, agents need reminders. They get this text message reminder linked to the generator website. So you know that they are at least have been pinged before the night before the appointment. So the other night before the appointment. So Craig, what's your night before the appointment procedure? Yeah. So I, I always, I like to log into Spiro's uh, photographer portal. So you, you, you know, the agents can order on their portal, but the photographers have their own portal through Spiro. So the night before I, I usually, I get a Slack notification uh, that is integrated with Spiro that tells me how many appointments I have the next day. And mm. what I like to do is I'll log into the photographer portal and look at that more in detail because the, the photographer portal has, you know, the number of photo jobs, the number of video jobs, drone jobs. It, you know, lists out all the different services and how many, uh, how many of those types of services I have. So I know to plan what equipment I need, how many batteries mm -hmm. I need. Um, though, honestly, I, more and more, I carry most of my gear with me all the time, regardless. You know, So say I have a, a day where I don't have any drone jobs. I could leave the drone at home, just figuring, uh, well, you know, nobody's ordered drone, I, I can leave it home. But what if I get to the property and I didn't realize that it had water on it, or it just had a really nice backyard that I think would benefit from drone. Um, what in, in the agent happens to be there. 
I'll talk with them, not in front of the client, not in front of the seller. Uh, Don't ever try and upsell in front of the seller because then it puts the agent in a really awkward position. Yes. You'll never shoot for that agent again if you Hmm. pull a stunt like that. (laughs) But I may suggest, you know, when the, when the seller is out of earshot, Hey, I think this property could really benefit from drone and, you know, no pressure, uh, just here's the why. Uh, But I thought I'd mention it. And sometimes they'll go for it. Sometimes they don't. Well, if I hadn't brought my drone with me, even though the portal said I didn't have any drone jobs, I've missed an upsell opportunity. Uh, But all, all that to say, it's, it's a good kind of uh, baseline of the minimum of what you need to take with you for that next day's jobs. Um, I look at special notes on each of those jobs. So do I need to be aware of something special? Like later today, I've got a photo only shoot that the seller has requested I not shoot the back of the house because they haven't power washed it. I need to know that before the night before and just have all my ducks in a row. So looking at special notes, um, looking at, you know, where each of those those, uh, shoots are because I've got the addresses. It's just it's just a really handy checklist to go, mentally go through and be prepared the night before. And I don't have to rush in the morning trying to make sure I've got all my ducks in a row. Yeah. Uh, that, I, I think that's really smart. Craig. You know, there's something about our brains and putting things in the night before mm-hmm. uh, putting things in our brain. Excuse me. I didn't say that very well, but I was on a coaching call yesterday and um, with, with a coach. So I wasn't, I, I wasn't doing any coaching but I was getting coached and they, this coach talked about uh, the day, the day before, before you end your day, you write down your top three goals for the next day. And the interesting thing is, is that our brains will begin to process those even subconsciously. Hmm. And if you put it in your brain, your brain does something with it. So I think that's really smart, Craig, with just scanning it real quick. Now, Craig, how long does this take? Because remember, we're super busy. Like, are you saying I have to spend an hour in that? You called it the photographer portal? Yeah, no. I mean, top five minutes. It oh, doesn't... this is quick. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'll, I'll look at the portal and, and that takes five minutes, it tops, at least for me. Um, I just, I need to know what's happening. Quick glance. Uh, yeah. Five minutes tops, Todd. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't take super long. I just, I like to go through all the notes and just make mm-hmm. sure I know what services are going, you know, going to happen that next day. Um, honestly, I probably spend more time making sure that I've got um, my batteries charged, uh, got my gear put together, that I have uh, the memory cards in my drone and my camera. Um, yeah, uh, just get my gear ready the ne- for the next day as well so that I can just mm-hmm. pick it up and grab it the, that next morning. I'm not rushing around and it doesn't take long. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So you were reminded in Slack Mm -hmm. if you have Slack integrated and then you can go to the photographer portal. There's all your information. Craig, let me ask you a question. So you, you, this is more not the business side, but it can relate to the business side. You talked about charging batteries. Uh, So for your drone, how many batteries, well, if I'm just going to get my drone right now, how many batteries should I buy? I would say three uh, just to be safe. I mean, I've got the Mavic Pro 2, you know, on a day that the wind isn't horrible, I might get 20, 22 minutes of flight time. Okay. And, you know, say you have three aerial silvers, it might take 10, 15 minutes to shoot each of those. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just three, three minimum just to be safe. If you have a really windy day, that's going to drain your motors faster. I actually carry four batteries with me now, Um, Mm. but I would say three is, is safe. Mavic 2 Pro, three batteries, and they do mm-hmm. make a pack. Is that called the Fly More pack? Is that what that is, or do they? Yeah, something like that. Okay. I mean, so the Mavic can... Pro 2 is kind of old now. There's, I mean, there's newer drones out there, but that drone still works really well for me. Perfect. Okay, great. What about camera batteries? <laughs> I carry six with me. Six and, of them. Yeah. And what I'm noticing is that the older the batteries get, the less charge they hold. I'm actually probably due to replace it, probably three of them. Uh, So thank you for the reminder on that. (laughs) Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, because this is the way we did it back when I was shooting. Do you buy OEM name brand batteries or do you buy the off brand batteries? I would suggest the OEM. They seem to work better, longer, but I do have some off brand as well. 
Yeah. We found the same thing. I typically would just buy the off brand cause I'm cheap. Mm-hmm. And then it's kind of funny cause I'd go look at Ryan's bag and this is when we shot Canon. Like he'd have all the OEM Canon batteries. It's almost like you open that sucker up and you see seven OEM batteries. So like <laughs> this, like, Oh, like, I'm like yeah. where do you get all the Canon batteries at? Like I got these, <laughs> I got these cheap, like no brand bat, no name batteries. So, uh, you decide what wor- will work best for you. You'll spend a lot more buying your name brand batteries, your camera, your OEM batteries, but they do last better. Mm-hmm. Great. Okay. What about, Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say that the battery question is an interesting one because we just made a change at WoW Video Tours uh, using a different camera setup for our videos than yes. our photos. And I used to go through the batteries a lot faster shooting mm-hmm. both the photos and the video on the same camera. Now that I'm photos only on, on my Sony, I don't go through the batteries as fast. So do I need to carry six? Probably not. But I mean, more is better, right? <laughs> I I agree. Yeah. I, when you're out there and this is your business, I, yes, 100%. Cause you're yeah. not, you're not driving to any store and getting those. Right. You know, maybe if you shoot a, I don't know, there's best buys out there that you might get a, you'll get a, you can probably buy a drone out there or a drone mm-hmm. battery. Uh, the camera batteries are kind of hit or miss at some of your electronic stores. Yeah. Okay, great. What about, okay. So you, we've gone to a different, so you, you, you're shooting photos on a, camera and then video on a, on a different camera. What are, what did we make a change there? Yeah. So we're shooting on the 14 and 15, uh, pros. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. At the iPhones and, uh, man, the image quality, <laughs> it's world of difference from, from our Sony's, at least my Sony um, Yeah, for video for video. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. We, we just really love the processing, especially of the windows, the HDR that the iPhone does. So mm-hmm. And yeah. we just run all that footage straight through the merge fleet and we don't color correct it anymore. It's incredible. And, uh, you know, it's, it works really well for us. Yeah. Especially for the scale that we're shooting at. I mean, we're, we're shooting a lot of videos every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know there's, there's some very artistic videographers out there that do beautiful work that might kind of look down on the iPhone, but they're, they're more the boutique type of videographers that just Mm -hmm. do some really high end luxury type work. And that's great. That's a great process for you. I I think every there there's different segments of, of the market that we serve and you can have different tools for, for different segments of that, uh, you know, that market. Yeah. Well said, well said. What about stabilization gimbal? Yeah. So, uh, DJI Osmo, uh, Osmo, Mo, Osmo, I just blanked out on the name of it. Um, it's a DJI gimbal that okay. holds my made, phone. Just made fine. for the made for the iPhone or made for yeah. a phone. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, and then does that charge? Does that have an external battery? Does that have internal? How do you do with that? Yeah, internal. So I make sure okay. that that's that's charged. You know, sometimes you might get that yellow battery indicator. You're getting low. Mm-hmm. Make sure you plug that in as soon as you get home. That that's what I do. As soon as I get home from my day shoot. I'm already changing out my batteries and charging them. That, that's the mm, first smart. thing I do so that I'm not caught flat footed that next morning. Cause I forgot to do it later in the evening. It's the first thing I do check my, you know, throw, pull my batteries out, put them on the chargers. I know I'm good for the next day. Okay. And just, okay. you know, the, the business impact of not being prepared or having not having enough batteries. That's embarrassing. <laughs> I just, I don't want our business to be embarrassed by me not being prepped and ha- following a system uh, to avoid that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well said. Now, will that gimbal, so say you have five videos in a day, will that Mm -hmm. last the whole day? It it has me now just to be, even if I don't have that yellow battery indicator shooting five videos in one day, I'm still going to plug that gimbal in at the end of the day, just to make sure I'm good for the next day. Is that USB-C? Like, could you charge Mm -hmm. it in your your car if you have, okay. So you have your car if you have to. I have done that. I have plugged it in, in the car, you know, say I've got five shoots in a day and at the end of the fourth shoot, I get that yellow battery indicator. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what the percentage is of the battery that's Mm -hmm. left. So I plug it in on my drive to that fifth shoot, just, you know, just to get a little extra juice uh, for that, that last shoot, just to make sure I'm not running out and I've never had a problem. Electronics seem to do can do some weird things when batteries get low, especially those motors on those gimbals. If the voltage isn't consistent, you could get just some weird choppiness. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but that's nice that, that, you know, USB-C right into the car. Right. 
Uh, what about, sorry, I'm just, I'm hit. This is impromptu, but I think it's, I think it's valuable. What about cards? What do you, do you have, you, do you have one card? Do you have a, what is our card C, uh, SD card strategy or memory card strategy? Yeah, we have a different card for every day of the week. Um, mm. So, you know, Monday, I'm using a Monday card Tuesday. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I'm carrying multiple uh, SD cards for every day of the week. And even, you know, say, SD cards fail, right? They can, they could fail. They can get corrupted. Um, mm. By carrying the extra days cards with you, you've always got backup cards. Um, I've, I've read stories on the Facebook groups of that happening where a card went bad or, you know, something happened and they were only carrying one card. It's like carry backups, yeah. <laughs> carry backups yeah, that, people. For as cheap as those things are. Yeah. And, and really all this equipment, even though some of it has a a larger price tag on it, it's all pretty cheap equipment. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember buying big video equipment back in the day, like that was expensive and heavy. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, protect yourself. Let me just, so you, you said you have a, like you're literally labeling those cards Monday, you're writing mm -hmm. Tuesday on a card. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And then you're using that card on the day. And mm -hmm. then, so you have five, six, seven cards. Right. And then, so what's the, what's the reasoning behind that, Craig? It's an insurance policy. You know, mm. say something happens when you upload those images, they get corrupted in Dropbox or Dropbox has some fatal error or Vimeo loses all your videos or, <laughs> or something mm. in, the, in that prior week. Yeah. Um, you can go back to that card. At least you have at least a week's backup where I can, you know, say something on Tuesday's shoot got screwed up online. Well, I still have the raw files that I can go back to on that Tuesday SD ah. card. So. Okay. So if once you import on your computer and you get those online and they corrupt, or maybe say you forget, you don't, you didn't select all of them and mm, you realize yeah. you didn't pull all of your media off the card. So you're saying if I were to shoot on that card the next day, I've deleted all of those images Informant, effectively yeah. Yeah. that if I have, if I use a different card the next day, I have five, six, seven days until I overwrite that media. So I'm almost, a, I'm a week out from that mm -hmm. shoot. Ah, that's great. So a yeah. nice safety net there. Yeah. Thankfully you don't need that most, you know, most times, mm -hmm. but that one day where something happens to be able to go back and still have that prior weeks, you know, shoots, that's a good thing. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. Okay. So um, let's just touch on real quick since we're here and we'll wrap it up. We'll wrap up the equipment part, but uh, 3D systems, what do you have? What do we do? Um, yeah. So for the, the 3D uh, shoots, I carry a uh, Ricoh Theta Z. Um, so the Z mod, the Z line. Yeah. Okay. Very small, very light, very compact. I mean, those big Matterport cameras, I mean, they do a great job, but man, are they big and bulky to have to drag around. Um, I, we don't do a ton of 3D scans. Uh, so if I see that I have one the next day, I just, I double check the battery level because those things can slowly drain over time. And I just make sure that I plug that, that in as well and make sure that that, you know, that Theta is ready to go for the next day. Great. An another great reason why we put the number of service jobs mm -hmm. you have for the next day, because if you don't shoot a lot of something and that pops up, mm -hmm. then, oh, goodness, like, oh, I better make sure it's charged. Right. Another oh, thing, let, let oh, me you, actually tag on to that. Thing, yeah. Um, yeah. So those Theta Z cameras drain quick. Say mm -hmm. you have three shoots in a day. The nice thing, also USB-C on that. So you could you uh, can charge in the car as well. Bring an extra plug with you. Um, you know, say you, you shoot the, the 3d scan first before you do your photos and video, shoot that first, plug it in, in the house. Don't forget to unplug it and take it with you, mm. but it, it just, that USB-C is nice to charge either at a house or in a car on your way to your next shoot. Ah, uh, great. So that it, so remember to throw, so the USB-C to an, to a 110, the, the, the plug mm -hmm. into the house you're saying, just right. make sure you throw one the or two of break. those. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing worse than not having that thing. And you right. like, you're looking at the wall and you're like, I could plug in there, but I only have USB. Like <laughs> you just need that stupid little thing. Like mm -hmm. my kids stole it to charge their darn device. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's so <laughs> real life. <laughs> Zeke. Yeah. What'd you, what'd you do Where's with the that? Plug at? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
I love or my it. Wi- or my wife, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> yeah. Smart, smart. We'll all learn from that. Okay. To wrap it up. So another thing we, we do somewhat frequently, but not a lot. Uh, audio agent on camera. What do we use for mic packs? Um, well, that's kind of been shifting. Um, okay. th- there's been the traditional mic pack and lapel, you know, lapel mic. Um, yeah. I, I carried, um, a dual pack, the Comica brand, which mm-hmm. was different than what most wow did, but that was, I got that back when I was on my own, um, got a really good deal. Um, but lately we've switched over to those, uh, DJI, mm. um, I just blanked out on the name. They're kind of a self-contained module. Mm-hmm. And you've got a receiver. I just totally blanked out. I'm embarrassed. It's made by DJI. Um, is it the Go mic? No. I forget. Yeah. If, if you type in DJI mic, it is... Um, I'm just searching here quickly, Craig. I can't even find the name of it. But it's got one receiver and two. We buy the two... Um, tra- or the two... Re- Wait, which yeah, am I going? It, it's it's got just two, called DJI Is that the transmitter mic. or the receiver? That's the transmitter. And then one It's got receiver. two transmitter so, and one receiver. Yeah. So you could mic two people. So if you want to have two mm-hmm. agents, because you'll get this sometimes, a lot of times you'll just have one agent speaking, mm-hmm. but sometimes you have a team and yeah. hey, can I have two people? Well, you can't share one mic. We've tried it. It does. Even <laughs> yeah. if you point it towards the other agent, it just doesn't sound good. So spend a little more money, get the two transmitters so you can clip it on both. And honestly, Craig, do we, do we, we just clip it on or do we do a lapel mic? What do we do for that? It, it's a self-contained thing, so it's got it's got both a clip and a magnet um, okay. that you can you can secure it with. Uh, but what I really like is the receiver. You can actually plug right into your iPhone, and ah. if you balance it right on the gimbal, the the gimbal can actually take on that additional weight. And it's just it's so so easy uh, compared to the the old mic pack and you know wire and have to wire people up. It, that DJI mic setup is really slick. Yeah. You know, it, maybe what we should do, Craig, is have Ryan on because be, that's the yeah. main bulk of the equipment. But honestly, there's probably five, six, seven different accessories that we put on it on the gimbal. So the, the magnetic little base, we put on weights at the bottom the better mm-hmm. st- uh, to better balance the gimbal. Yeah. We have a strap where we can – because now if you're managing camera and gimbal plus iPhone, you've got more equipment. And there's, there's probably – four, five, six different accessories that Ryan has yeah. tried. Like literally I give him a hard time because we get accessories shipped in every day. <laughs> like he almost looks like he has a store in his office. Like I'm just like another accessory, but he tries many of them because we, yeah. f- we want to field test these to make sure that it's efficient. Again, right. we love a streamlined process. We want to look professional when we're in the field and we want to make sure that we have the gear ready to work to do what we need so we can service the client, give them great media, and move on to the next shoot. Maybe we'll cue Ryan up here to come so that we can show you all the little accessories that he spent hours and hours kind of field testing and getting out to our team. Right. Yeah. That'd be a great episode. Yeah, that would be. Geek out so, a little okay. bit on gear. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. We we have never actually done that. This is the most we've ever talked about, like the the gear side of it. But it does tie into the business side because if right. you don't have the gear and if you're not streamlined with the gear, it could be a gap in your business. Yeah. And it could prevent you from growth. And and knowing that you don't have to spend a ton of money on top line equipment mm. to do real estate video and, and photo. You don't. You don't. If you are out there searching the forums of the groups for the next great camera body or lens, <laughs> that is not the problem why your business is not growing. That's not the problem of this, you know, of you not growing or you not getting business. Right. It's not. That might be tough to hear, but it is not. Y'all, we use Sony A6 something thousand, 63, 64, 65 thousand bodies. We use the Sony lens, a little bit better of a lens. We use iPhones for our videos. Guys, we're going to shoot twelve to 15,000 this year, and we are growing like crazy. Now, we yeah. understand what our client wants. And like Craig mentioned, I understand some of you are in a market where you have got to go completely extreme and you got to push the boundaries of everything. That's not a whole lot of markets in the country. So don't let you, don't kid yourself thinking that you have to. Right. Okay. We have found success with it. It's not the gear. The gear is not the problem. So streamline it, get it, and then just look at how you can build relationships. 
Exactly. Cool. Well, great, Craig. Well, you know, we are approaching the end of our time with you all today. We took a little tangent with you, so I'm sorry for that, but I hope it was valuable for you to understand what gear we use. And we just don't pick it and use it. Trust me. We try gear all the time, Mm -hmm. all the time. We have it shipped in. We try it. We put it through its tests. We try different brands. We try everything. And, And we have two people devoted. We have two employees devoted to this at our business. So there's hopefully some value in there today. Uh, kind of a set it and forget it kind of mentality that we've put it through its paces and we know it works. Um, but any last minute thoughts on how you prep for your shoot the night before Craig, or just to get ready? Boy, I, I mean, just having that photographer portal and that summary of the next day with being able to look at, you know, the, the notes from the agent on anything specific that needs to be done. It's just, it, it, it allows me to go to sleep at peace. I've already, I already know what the next day is going to look like. I don't, I know I don't need to wake up stressed about, okay, what do, what do I need to do? I've already got all the details. I already know what my plan is. I can go to bed, get a good night's rest and just be ready for the next day. So just having that, that portal through Spiro uh, for, you know, the photographer's portal to be able to help me mentally prepare for the next day. It's just, it's a game changer. Mm, I I just, I don't need to stress about things. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear. So next week, y'all, what we're going to do, we'll pick, we'll make this a two part series and we will talk about how the photographer portal is your infield guide the day of. So we talked about the night before setting yourself up for success. Next week, we'll transition into the day of. So we will share with you all the tips and tricks, how we not only use the portal, but tips and tricks that we've picked up along the way of how to, uh, get through your day successfully and how to deal with some difficult conversations. Hmm. How do you tell what if the house isn't ready? What if you have, uh, what if you set off an alarm at a house? What if you can't get in? So we'll cover some of those things and we'll let you know how we deal with those and how we've streamlined that for success in our business. I've never set off an alarm before accidentally, Todd. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, me, me neither. I've, <laughs> I have, you know, I've never opened the door and then just, <laughs> you know, Anyways, we'll get to that next week. Yeah. My ears are still bleeding from those occurrences when I did. (laughs) Right. (laughs) All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in this week. Hopefully you found some value in this and talking about processes and how that can impact and make your your business more efficient and uh, just give you peace of mind. Uh, We we just appreciate you tuning in. And if if you have any questions or ideas on topics that you want to see addressed on the business side of real estate, uh, photography and videography, please, by all means, let us know. You can drop us an email, hello at Spiro.media. If you'd like to find out more information on Spiro, uh, visit the website, website, spit it out, you're a communicator, Craig. (laughs) It's just (laughs) Spiro.media. We got a great knowledge base that answers all sorts of questions about the software there and how to do things. Uh, So if you're looking for tutorials, check out the knowledge base at our website as well. And uh, yeah, we just appreciate it. It's glad to be back with you, Todd, and uh, looking forward to next week. So in the meantime, make sure that you take some time to be thankful for the things that you've been blessed with in your life and make sure you take a breath this week. Have a good one. Take care. Thank you for joining us for the Spiro Podcast, Managing Your Real Estate Photography and Videography Business. This is a production of Spiro and WOW Video Tours. You can find out more about Spiro's real estate media business management software at our website, spiro.media.